Well, hi there. Thank you. So I'm Maurits Kaptein, and I'm a social scientist. And, and what I study is people's online purchase behavior. Basically, what I study is, is why, why did I buy this T-shirt? Why, why did I order this online and not something else? And, and let's start out. It's not the price. I mean, I paid 40 euros for this T-shirt. And that's something. I mean, it's a white T-shirt with a plain print. You can buy them for 5 euros. There's a bunch of other reasons why I bought this product. Um, basically, people in general, you and me, buy products because experts recommend them. Because some author, you know, you know some, some famous skateboarder wears this brand. Or because a lot of your friends wear that brand. Or because it's, it's you know, limitedly available. There's only a hundred of these shirts in the Netherlands. That makes me drive why I do these purchase decisions. Now that's exactly what I study. I study persuasion. The ways in which we can sway you to make a purchase decision. Now, I'm not the first to study this. Lots of people have studied persuasion. However, when I first started looking into it, I found lots of theories. For example, theories that explain why authority arguments and experts endorsements work. However, we still have a super hard time predicting whether or not you would actually buy this T-shirt if some expert recommends it. And we have a hard time predicting this because in social science, we have been stealing methods from, for example, physics. We have been looking at a thing called average effects, effects over groups of people. So just let me explain what I mean by average effects. If you look at physics, what physicists have done, for example, to measure the gravitational constant, is to drop a ball and measure how fast it went down. Now, you have some error in your measurement, so you drop that ball again and again and again and again, and you average over all of those measurements. Social scientists took the same approach um, to actually examine persuasion. So what we did was offer a book to half of this audience and offer that same book to the other half, but this time endorsed by the New York Times. Now what we found is that on this half, more people would actually buy that book on average. That still doesn't mean, though, that if I show this book to you, you would actually buy it. Now over the last few years, I've been using interactive technologies, websites, to study people's responses to persuasion to study individual level responses to persuasion over longer periods of time. And what we found, the basic thing we found, was if I want to predict whether or not you will buy that book based on an endorsement by the New York Times, I'm better off knowing how you responded less time to the New York Times endorsement than how other people responded. So that brought us to the idea to build persuasion profiles. Profiles for each individual of what are the things that make them tick? What drives their purchase decisions? Now, if you go to Amazon.com, what you see is a bookstore. If you go to Booking.com, what you see is a travel agency. What I see, though, is a tool. It's a tool to study your decision making. It's a tool to track you as an individual over time and see how you respond to these expert endorsements, to the facts that other people do something, to special discounts. And from that, we can make a persuasion profile. The persuasion profile describes at an individual level, for each of you, what it is that makes you tick. And in the end, if I know your persuasion profile, I might actually be able to sell you this T-shirt. Thank you.